Hello, welcome back to Engineering Circuit Analysis. Here we're going to continue talking about the integrating amplifier. In the last section, we talked about the circuit. We derived the equation that's the output of the integrating amplifier. And just as a reminder, it's the, it's the, new, it's the actual calculus integral of the input voltage. There's an initial condition, there's some scaling, there's an inversion, but basically that's what it is. Now in this sec section, we're going to kind of revisit that output equation, draw a few pictures to really show you graphically what's happening so that you can have that mental picture in your head. Sometimes, you know, I tell you the output's the integral and you're like, okay, whatever. But I'm gonna draw some pictures to kind of show that to you. And then once we have that in our brain, the next section we'll go ahead and solve our first problem. So once we have this foundational material uh, uh, in our head, then it's gonna make everything so much easier. All right, so you're gonna have to recall, I shouldn't have erased it, but that, uh, that circuit that's the integrating amplifier, it's exactly like an inverting configuration, except that feedback resistor is a capacitance. And we said um, that the output expression as a function of time for that configuration is the constant on the outside, one, negative one over the input resistance driven through the source, or uh, the source resistance there going through the resistor, times the capacitance, which is in the feedback leg, uh, that's a constant, and then it's an integral from T0 up to the value of T. Uh, the source is a function of time, or can be a function of time, doesn't have to be. You're integrating that over time, and then you have an initial condition, which is V output, the output of the op amp, uh, at time T0. So this is the initial charge on the capacitor, basically. So again, in words, the output of this guy is going to be the initial output at time 0, that's where we're starting, plus whatever the area under this curve is up to this point in time t where that's where we stop it the integration is finished up to that point and that's the output voltage at that instant of time t right so as much as i love math i like to draw pictures even better now one thing to consider vs this uh this uh, function of time can be anything it can literally be a sinusoid it can be a crazy a set of sinusoids summed together like voice from a microphone might have that kind of characteristic it could be a triangle pulse up and down. It could be a square pulse, right? So since we're trying to illustrate the math and kind of make sure you understand things, what we're going to do is draw an input with, to this amplifier, which is just a simple square pulse. And it goes, it'll go down below the axis as well because that's really easy to draw areas of so that you can see what's happening. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and draw. Hmm, what's going to be the best way to do this? Uh, let's do a square pulse. input. And again, the input can be anything. We're just picking this because it's easy to understand. So what we're going to do, you know what, let me stay with black. I like black for the axis here. So what I want to do is I want to draw an axis right here. Something like this anyway. And then we're going to have a tick mark here. We're going to call this three volts. We're gonna have a tick mark here. We're gonna call this negative three volts. This is gonna be the source voltage V sub S that's going into the amplifier, okay? And then let's do over here, right here, we're gonna call this T sub one. And then over here, we're gonna call this two times T sub one. So I could put, you know, one second, two second, three seconds. I could do that, but it's gonna make the math a little bit more general and a little more powerful for you to see it like this. This is not exactly right, but these, these widths should be pretty close to, to being the same. All right, so let's get let's cut to the punchline here. We have a square pulse that we're gonna start up at time zero. So this is, this is time T right here. At time zero, it's zero volts exactly, but, a, but right, a tiny little millisecond at zero itself, it pops up up to the three volt mark and it stays constant. That's what a square pulse is. Now at time T1, whatever it is, it's gonna drop right through the axis and go straight down to the negative three volt area. And then it's going to go over here for the same exact duration of time. This is T and this is 2T, so this is the same thing. And then it's going to go back up. Now you can imagine this thing doing the same thing over and over and over again, but for now let's just consider it over one cycle like this. Now you know from looking at this that since this width is the same as this width, and since this height is the same as this height, you know the area under this curve is going to be the same as the area under this curve. So I'm kind of giving the punchline a little bit uh, away a little bit, but the point is you, you, you understand that. Now what I want to do, actually, I think what I want to do, I want to, I want to not write the math under here because I'm going to draw another picture under here in a second, but let's go over to the other board.